Welcome, welcome. See, I told you I'd be back. Much to the cheers of the crowd. And then when they're done doing that, they all push the like button. But hey, I got a text this morning from a guy named Jim. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jim. I would like to buy this house. Thanks. And he has a link. I got this at five o'clock this morning um, from who I'm going to call fictitious Jim. And Jim, I'm looking at the link. And I'm pretty sure if I click that link, bad things are going to happen to my phone. And how many agents do you know are up at 5 a.m.? That's, you know, <laughs> it ain't me. <laughs> so I just thought I'd share that with everybody. I just kind of, I leave my phone on. So, you know, if you want to get a hold of me, you'll find me. I was also asked this morning what part of the valley that I concentrate on in selling homes. So I, I pulled this up. This is a plot map of recent sales. So you can see it's all over the map, all the way up here from Anthem out to Buckeye down to Maricopa and pretty much everywhere. Um, I've lived here since 1996. I used to uh, work for a major banking company. So I've been to every city in the state every part of the valley um, i'm actually licensed to sell anywhere in the state of arizona as is every realtor that gets their license the challenge is that um, you know i can't unlock a home in sedona because i'm not a member of their association and it costs anywhere from 500 to 800 dollars a year and a lot of agents do that uh, they'll they'll join the association to go up and sell homes in Prescott or in Payson. I know in Fountain Hills, there are a lot of agents that in the summertime work up in the White Mountain area, Heber, Overgard, and Payson in the summer because that's where the purchases are. And uh, so there's a lot of that that goes on. I have not done that yet. I'm thinking about it. But this morning, we have 7,659 homes on the market. That's about 300 higher than last week. So that's a good trend. Is it enough for buyers? Nope. So he says, I just wanted to give a shout out for you for this great show that I very much look forward to every day. Well, thank you. I look forward to being here as well. And we're going to talk a little bit today about retiring in Phoenix, uh, where it used to be and where it is now. And that word retirement is very near and dear to my heart. So <laughs> I'm looking out for next year. I'll tell you that. So which realtors out there, um, if you're at EXP, uh, you and I need to talk. Uh, because I've got uh, plans for next year. So um, interest rates, interest rates right now are today 3.21, yesterday 3.16, yikes. You know, we sell more homes when, when interest rates are going up than we ever do when they're coming down. Um, and we're seeing a little bit of that, a little bit of that, not too much. A lot of chatter going on about Zillow again. So let me, let me tee this one up. I saw a headline youtube video and it said zillow stops buying housing crash next well they stopped because they don't have the labor to you know to fix them up to put in the carpet and the paint and uh, inspect it so they got a little ahead of themselves if you look at what their economists are predicting they're not predicting a downturn um, if they were stopping because they thought real estate was going to fall, it would also be reflected in their economists and in their projections, which is a large part of what they do. I mean, they're every bit as accurate as every one of us that tries to guess. Uh, they were closer than core logic, I can tell you that. Uh, but there is the Zillow uh, Case Shiller Index. It's what they do. And uh, right now, you know, in Phoenix, Zillow bought 321 homes. Um, and uh, that's, or they sold 321 and that's only 2.3% of our market. So, you know, they can fold up and go away today, uh, like they did and we're just not going to feel it. So, but there is some chatter out there and, and, uh, there's, here's a comment here, uh, about, we know how important certainty and convenience are to homeowners seeking to move. And we've worked hard over the past seven years to ensure we can continue to deliver our experience at scale, said the open door spokesperson. At scale is an important number. In other words, they knew they were going to be buying more homes and they also knew they would need more help. So they ramped up. Uh, looks like Zillow had a hard time doing that. I'm sure they were prepared and they were trying, but they weren't able to do it. Now, what does it mean for these offer pad and open door now that Zillow's backed out? Well, offer pads exp is expanding into California. They were planning on doing that, whether Zillow put on the brakes or not. And 
Greg Haig here, who owns 72 Sold, said between May 1st and June 30th, iBuyers sold nearly 200 homes in the Valley. Now, that number has tripled. So in September, they sold something like 600. Where they profited between $50,000 and $200,000, said Greg Haig. iBuyer service fees further increased their profits, $10,000 to $30,000 per home. Now, Greg Haig, uh, uh, pretty good at getting in front of the camera and getting in front of press. He's got a staff that does that for him, so I uh, commend him for that. I thought it'd be a good time to look at the actual iBuyer math for a moment before we get to the topic at hand. Um, and I just kind of did some number crunching. So let me share this with you and show you that this is just a rough estimate based on what I've read, what I've seen, and what I've experienced. So let's say they have a purchase price here of $400,000. That's what they bought uh, the home for. Now, um, it's kind of unclear right now whether or not they're paying at market value or below. Historically, they've been paying below market value, which means this home was probably worth about four fifteen. So, are they inflating the prices? Not really. Uh, they're giving you a lower, a lower price. Um, but there have been some some surprises out there. So they have a transaction fee, and I put the fee at three point two percent because that's where Zillow was. Offer pad and open door, they were at 7.5%, but I'm gonna go on the low end and say that they've reduced their margins a little bit in this tight market. And then typically, they ask for a repair credit around $5,000 um, you know, for things that they need to fix in your home. So their net purchase price on this $400,000 home, voila, $382,200. Now, they wanna sell it, so they're gonna sell it for $430,000. They have put in $8,000 worth of improvements, carpet, paint. Sometimes they replace uh, appliances, countertops. It all depends on the condition of the home when they bought it. I'm just spitballing out there 8000 just for the purposes of this example. They have to pay sales commissions. So if a, a realtor comes in and uh, brings them a buyer, then they get 3% or 2.5. Then there's closing costs. You can't avoid the closing costs. So that's about 4200. So the net price is 4,400. Their profit is $22,700, 6%. And that matches what industry experts were saying yesterday when they said that on average, Zillow was making about 6% per transaction. But and so was Offerpad and Open Door, but recently, um, you know, Zillow being one of the biggest was was not hitting that six percent mark. And uh, I don't know why. I don't spend a lot of time trying to follow them. I just like to concentrate on my own business. And my own business is showing me this. This is the Cromford Demand Index and Supply Index. So one hundred being normal. Um, and you can see that the supply is starting to come up, but we're way down here. We should be up here. You can see that our demand started going down, but now it's creeping up slightly on the index. So when you hear that buyers are backing off, um, we're just not seeing that very much here at all. Maybe two to 300 people uh, on a seven day average, but not enough, not enough. We still have this going on, folks. This is uh, the area up here where the Taiwan Semiconductor Plant is being built. And there's a lot of stuff that's being built around this. Think of it like the Price Corridor down in Chandler where Intel was. And then all these other tech companies came up there. They've got plans for that type of corridor all the way from I-17 out to the 303. And if you look here just on this site right here, they have a tech park, tech park, tech park, core, phase one. Uh, tech park, mixed use, mixed use. This is going to be a big deal up there when they get this Taiwan chip plant. So uh, that bodes well for that part of Phoenix. And speaking of that part of Phoenix, let's talk about a national survey that comes out all the time on the best places to retire. And they look at Phoenix Metro. They look at a lot of different metro areas. And the ratings breakdown said overall Phoenix got 6.8 out of 10 in the report system, which measured metros according to desirability, value, job market, quality of life, and migration. Couple screwy things in there. Uh, we had the highest in net migration at 7.8. It ranked lowest in value at 6.6. .6. They used to only look at 120 cities, now they upped it to 178. Um, so they were looking at more cities and it was 2020 when tourism tanked here. So a lot of the numbers just weren't looking good. 
you know, I always say we just can't, can't go back and look at 2020 for any numbers for historical reference at all. They just, they just don't count. The report gave most weight to the quality of life index, which they called the happiness index, measuring how content residents are with various aspects of their daily life. They didn't call me. Uh, this year's report added crime rates and air quality as factors, and these may have also been a factors in Phoenix fate on the charts. I would agree with that. However, retiring in Arizona, we have a lot more choices than just Phoenix. So the lot, top 10 places to retire in Phoenix are Sun City West, Green Valley, Sun City, Litchfield Park, Prescott. If you're not from here, it's pronounced Prescott like biscuit. Uh, Cave Creek, Paradise Valley, Cottonwood, Golden Valley. That's in the northwest corner of Arizona. Golden Valley also boasts the lowest tax burden of any city in the top 10. Pretty slick, huh? So there are some great places to retire here. Um, Sun City West, uh, you can retire uh, uh, pretty nice up there. You got some reasonably priced homes. And so I looked and said, well, what other kind of options are there? There's some over 55 communities. And here's one here. This price is 55,000. It's a little modular home. It's uh, some people don't like those. Yes, you do have a lease fee in this uh, over 55 community. They run between 600 and $750 a month, but you get to pick up this nice little modular home. It's called a park model. And it's a, uh, you know, relatively new, nice looking unit. And they're about two bedrooms, about 950 square feet, comfortable. A lot of people come down here and live in them in the wintertime and then head on out to their other home that's in Michigan or Wisconsin or Canada. And uh, a lot of these parks have a lot of activities and things to do. They've got their own swimming pools. They've got uh, pickleball. Pickleball is a huge sport uh, for us old geezers because it's not hard on the knees. So pickleball is popular. So that is a nice retirement option. And there's not a lot of them. Um, there's uh, a few new developments coming out not new developments, but a few of these communities that are putting in newer park models. And uh, it's just an economic option for people that are looking to retire. So look for me out at one of those places in Mesa next year. I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. I'd love to live in Prescott. I'll be honest with you. I love that part of town, that part of the state. So meanwhile, take on the day and continue to have a great week and wish me luck. We wrote another offer yesterday. I think this one might have legs. Stay tuned.